Hey everyone, good morning, good morning. We are live for the daily drop-in this morning where the Teach Better team is live every single morning, Monday through Friday. Regardless of if it's winter break or anything in between, we are here to celebrate the day with you. We look like we already have some technical difficulties over on my end. It looks like we are struggling to go live in our private Facebook group, which all, by the way, all of you can access at teachbettergroup.com. But hey, I'm sure somebody will share that feed over into that private group and we'll be good to go and check into that later today. We are excited to get ready into talking through classroom management, continue our, our conversation from yesterday. Carrie Pitstick is in the house and we also have some good news articles and everything in between. So we'll be right back. And if somebody listening could share this feed into our private group, that would just be awesome. <laughs> It is Tuesday, December 21st. Many of us are in winter break. Some of us are enjoying our last few days with students before winter break, and we are headed into a wonderful Tuesday for sure. Carrie, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Yeah. It's lovely to be here with you this morning. <laughs> I was so excited when I saw that you were on our list for this week because everyone knows who you are, and yet some people have never met you. And like, I think that's so fun. It's so great to be able to have Teach Better team members actually on the show. And so I'm so thrilled that we get to talk shop today. Yes, I cannot wait. So good. I see Brad's already in the comments. Brad, so good to see you. Obviously, Brad's also a member of our Teach Better team. Um, for those of you who may not know Carrie, Carrie, you do so much out, out in education, so much specifically for our internal Teach Better team. Can you kind of share who you are, what you do. I don't know how you're going to go through the entire list, but I'll add in for the things you forget. I know you would think after answering this question so many times that I would get better at it, but I'm like, where do I start? Um, so I am a seventh grade ELA teacher in Illinois. That is like my main role in education. And then for the Teach Better team, I am the director of digital content. And there I just run all things blog, all of the blog projects. Um, and then I have the privilege of working with a bunch of people on my team. And that is Livia, Sarah, Karen, and Nikki. Um, they support the blog in all of the um, projects that we work on. Oh, so unreal like honestly guys if you've not been to teachbetter.com recently there is a blog or two or 12 every single day and there's so much content i just logged in the other day there was a brand new winter break series mm -hmm. that i i can't believe how how consistently all these things come together i mean with the guest bloggers that you guys support and manage and then getting the content actually up and edited i know that a lot of people for in our teach better community have experienced being a guest blogger with us we're always encouraging more of our Teach Better community to do that, but you've really like developed this entire department. I know when you came onto the team, yeah, we had a blog, but it has really like grown into this, its own community, right? We kind of joke like kind of like the ambassadors or our administrators that join our mastermind session, our guest bloggers are like their own community. They have socials every single quarter and everything like that. It's unreal. Yeah, when we first or when I first started, I think we were doing 16 posts a month. And then that was like, that was all there was to it. And as you mentioned, now we have our blogger events and we have all of these other projects that we do and posting anywhere between 30 to 60 blogs a month. Um, so, but again, I couldn't do that without our guest bloggers. And then the other people on um, our blogging department, everyone has a hand in putting all of those things together. So I certainly cannot take credit for all of that. <laughs> no, I know that it, it totally takes a village and our blog department has tripled in size. I mean, it's so fun to be able to bring on new faces that can lend their skills into making that blog special. For people who may not know what it's like to blog for a website or to blog for a team, um, can you tell us a little bit about the process? I know that like truly, like especially the process within Teach Better, because it really is different. We want it to feel different. Um, that community is very intentionally formed. It's not a coincidence that 
that that crew gets together for, you know, quarterly hangouts and stuff like that. So can you tell us a little bit about what it's, what it means to blog, what it's like to blog with the team? Yeah. So the cool thing about blogging with us is that you really can write about anything educational related that you want to. We do send email updates that have ideas if you're wanting to write, but then are unsure what to write. We have actually put together a blog, a blogger course, and that is a course that will walk our guest bloggers through all things blogging and how to create a strong post and getting it all set up the way that you need it to. But the nice part about it is if there are some things that you're not comfortable doing or are not sure how to do in terms of setting up your blog, when you submit it, our editing team will take it from there. And I always just tell people, just get your thoughts down and we'll take it from there and do the rest. And then we'll get it ready to publish. And as the last year has progressed, we have been adding in our blogger exclusive events where we are trying to really build that community. So it's not just people submitting posts and then going about their day. We want to offer an opportunity for people in our blogging community to get to know each other and form those um, relationships across um, the states and across the world, which I think is super awesome. It is so cool. And I, I really feel, Carrie, you have built with your, I mean, with the help of our entire blogging department, this really beautiful opportunity that a lot of educators that I know that want to get into blogging essentially like start their own website. That is a big undertaking, right? Like you're publishing the post yourself, you're writing the content, you're editing it, you're putting out into the world, you're sharing it with the world. I mean, that is a lot, a lot of layers to trying to get your ideas across. And I think it's so crazy that with the Teach Better community, I as an I as a teacher can can put my thoughts down, try and curate, you know, whatever I'm trying to communicate in a blog piece. And then it not only goes through an editing process, it goes through a marketing campaign, it goes through all these different layers so that when it shows up on a website, you know, like teachbetter.com, then I know that it's been edited. I know that all the pieces are there. It looks like a professional blog. I just love that that so many people have chosen to do this as their maybe first opportunity getting their voice amplified. I think it's so crazy on how that's all structured. So cool. Yeah, and our social media team takes good care of the blogs. I mean, every time I log on to Facebook or Twitter or um, Instagram, just anywhere, I'm always seeing the sharing of our blog posts, which is also super awesome. So fun. So you, I just want you to know that like, that sounds like a full-time job. Like I even see the work that you guys do, you and everybody in the blog department. To me, that seems like a full-time job. We have like, a t I mean, how many guest bloggers do we have? Um, we have, I think over 130 at the moment. Like that's like a rough yeah. estimate, but well over a hundred. Right. So with that being said, like, like that's a whole undertaking. So that in and of itself, but you're also a full-time teacher. I mean, like you're, you're in the trenches day in, day out working with students. Tell us a little about that. Yeah. So the, I think, well, first of all, the key is to love what you do, because I do feel like I, I have a lot of different things that I do in my life, but I enjoy all of them. So it doesn't really feel like working. Um, but yeah, in my day job, I am with seventh grade students teaching ELA um, in the northern suburbs of, um, well, I guess in northern Illinois, but the suburbs of Chicago, like geograph geographic. Um, and I don't know what else, I don't know what else to say about that. I just, I've been a seventh grade ELA teacher for seven years now, and I just love it so much. Yeah. I love that you have such a passion for writing and reading and, and all these pieces and you're able to kind of share it in multiple avenues of your life. I know teaching seventh grade is its own, own undertaking with the sarcasm. <laughs> I love those middle school people, but I just think it's so fun that depending on what you're working on as an educator, it's either with the students and you're working on some sort of development or lesson plan, or you're working with other teachers around the world and you're working on sharing their voice. It's just such an interesting overlap. I love that. But you're right. I do get to bring my passion to reading and writing with teaching, but then I also then come home and get to continue that with adults. And I just love the opportunity to get to do that. So cool. Well, we're going to get into a lot of this discussion. I know as we're kicking off Daily Drop-In, um, I want to encourage all of you to be sharing out that you're watching this morning. I know it's Tuesday, December 21st. So many people are still sleeping and enjoying a quiet morning, or they're getting ready to hang out with students 
with um, with the break coming soon. We have comments going crazy, Carrie. People love talking about <laughs> the work that you're doing is so impactful, saying good morning. And I really love that people are on winter break and choosing to get up early to listen to the show. So that's like the nicest compliment ever. It's so cool. I love that. And I love how Andrea is just being my hype person right now, just like sharing all the things I do. <laughs> I know there's so many comments in here and also some, some new and old faces. Laura, it's so good to see you in here. It's been ages. I know Brad is just bragging on all the work you do. Andrea is is telling us all the things you forgot to mention, like all the things. Oh, wait, she's saying you read a million books a year. Tell me a little. Oh, and the dog whisperer, that's for sure true. I see, Andrea is just giving you a whole list. I know she's coming up with everything. I don't read a million books a year. This year, I, at the moment, am at 58, which I know for some people's standards is maybe not a lot, um, but I reading is my number one hobby. And I just am thankful that despite how busy I am, that I find time to read a bunch of books. Yeah. I, I have no idea how you do all this, like all of these things. And we get into like, oh yeah. And she makes courses for the Teach Better Academy. Hey, can we talk about that really quick? Cause even if they don't want to, even if somebody's listening and they don't want to be a blogger for Teach Better, you guys just threw out a course in November that was just strategies to be a stronger blogger, right? I mean, that was just recently. Yeah, it's called Writing Strategies and Marketing Your Work. And it just takes people through the process of like creating an idea for a post and then actually what to do when you're actually writing, things to keep in mind after you're done writing, and then just sharing a bunch of marketing strategies to make sure that you are putting your post out there and getting other people to see it and respond mm -hmm. to it and get those interactions that you can build in just through sharing your work. That's so cool. No, I think that's so great. And I also like that you can take those ideas and whether you're a blogger yourself or you can take those ideas and implement them into a lesson plan with students. I mean, getting mm -hmm. students to amplify their voices, share their voices, that course has a lot of different elements of writing. It's not just the writing component, but it's understanding SEO, which I truly still did the state don't understand <laughs> or anything else. I mean, it really goes through more than just get your thoughts down, you know, by, by writing them down. Right. But you're right. I love that you can take those ideas. When I was creating the course with Livia, she was adding in some things for our plan for creating the course. And I was like, oh my gosh, I love that. I'm stealing that from my classroom next week. And I just love that it's applicable to adults as they're writing, but you can also take those same ideas and modify them for any age group, really. Yeah, no, that's so neat. Speaking of Liv, she's joining us on the show next week. We're doing a Build a oh, Grid yes. series. I know a lot of you have heard of it, but I just want to keep make sure that I mention it so you guys know that Daily Drop-In is still on next week, Monday through Friday, but it looks a little bit different. We're doing a Build a Grid series where Chad and I will be live with guests from all over the world um, modeling how to build a grid. And she's joining us on Tuesday to build a reading grid. I cannot wait for that. I will say I've started to use the grid method this year, but I've been not sure how to implement it in like a reading aspect. So I've been doing it a lot with our writing units, but I'm super excited to see all the tips on how to create a reading grid. Well, and that's the part that I think is really exciting because as you guys know, next week we're splitting it up by subject. So we're doing science on Monday, reading on Tuesday, social studies Wednesday, math Thursday, and writing on Friday. And we're going to be building grids with all different types of educators, right? Elementary, middle school, high school. But what I like about doing this type of series is you can watch a high school grid, not in your content area and learn a lot. You can watch a grid in your content area at a different grade level and learn about, learn a lot. So even though Liv is an administrator and um, teacher in her building, I, I think she'll be focusing more on like an elementary reading mm -hmm. grid. There'll be so many different components that you can take from that and adapt for a seventh grade reading grid. You know what I mean? Right. For sure. I'm super and then excited. obviously vice versa, if you are somebody who's teaching at a higher level, even if you're watching a content grid in a different, um, in a different grade level, I think you're, you're gonna be able to take all these pieces together. So whether you teach all the subjects or not, I think all week long, we're gonna be able to have a lot of tips and tricks and mm -hmm. you're all gonna be able to see authentic brainstorming, which is kind of nerve wracking, but real. I mean, that's what it's like, right? Yep. And we have, I have to do my plug here. We do have a blog coming out each day about tips and tricks for building a grid. So yes, I forgot about that, but you force us to write blogs and that will be happening. 
Yep, I do. <laughs> I love it. So good. All right, Carrie, you know, it's Tuesday. So we typically get straight into brainstorm bank right at the beginning of the show. And then we save our good news articles. We save our holidays for the very, very end. So are you ready to head into our brainstorm bank? Yes, I am. All right, let's go. Hey everyone, good morning. Carrie and I are so thrilled to be here with you Tuesday, December 21st. We've been talking top about blogs, but let's get into answering some of your questions and our theme for the week. Our theme this week has been kind of like rebuilding the fundamentals of your classroom management. But as many of you know, and we will continue to say over and over, our brainstorm bank segment, whether it's at the beginning of our show or near the end of our show, is really just a time to ask if you all need anything. So if there's something you're brainstorming, something you want to get off your chest, something that you're working through, we just want to emphasize that you are not doing that alone. Carrie and I would love to brainstorm with you. We're not promising that we'll have all the right answers. <laughs> Definitely try to help you in some way to connect you maybe with somebody else or a resource that would get you on the right track. So if you're thinking through anything with students or staff or truly anything in between, feel free to throw that in the comments. We'll be watching that uh, for sure. I also see that it is Nikki's birthday. Nikki is a wonderful member of our Teach Better Ambassador crew. Thank you, Brad, for noting that. Nikki, happy birthday. Happy birthday. To celebrate with you. So fun. You know, Carrie, obviously you're a classroom teacher. You are constantly thinking through your classroom management skills. You're also a, a huge element of our blog department. I am only assuming that we publish blogs that help with classroom management all the time. Mm -hmm. What are your thoughts when we talk about like the fundamentals of classroom management? I know it's so broad, but what are your thoughts? So I did listen to your live yesterday with Katie. Um, I did listen to it after the fact because I was still sleeping in the morning. Um, but I, one of the things that you guys talked about that resonated mm -hmm. with me the most was the idea of routines and structures. And I think for me, there was a time where if I would have pictured my routine being the same every day with my students, I would have been like, they're going to get bored and that's boring to do the same thing every day. But I think it's important to keep in mind that just because you have the same routine and structure every day, you don't have to do the same thing every day. So with my students, we start every day with a bell ringer on mentimeter.com. It's just a website that students can log on to a device and respond to a question. I do totally random questions. They are not always content related. It might be a would you rather or a trivia question or just like how was your weekend type of response. And then after that, we always phase into either our independent reading time. One day a week, I do book talks. And then on Fridays, we do free write Fridays. Um, after that, we have like our whole group time, which could be a mini lesson. It could be some kind of activity or game or whatever it is that we're doing that day. And then we end the class with our independent work time. So even though the like bones of our class is the same every day, we're not doing the same thing every day and every day looks so different. So I think it's just important to keep in mind that routines and structures doesn't mean that you're doing the same thing every day, because I think that could then get boring for students where like you're just doing the exact same thing. Well, and that's, I, I like that we're adding a new layer to this Monday conversation because you're right that we don't, we're not looking to get students to walk in and be bored because they know everything that's coming. But when you're able to provide some structure about what's expected and what's expected of each other, then you can kind of dabble in all the fun stuff um, as you go. And I think that you've given so many good examples of how a routine can look different day to day. But the students also kind of know what, what to expect when they walk in, or at least what's expected of them when they walk in your room, which is so cool. Right. And every once in a while, I have to change our structure where we may not do an independent reading day, or we maybe go to the library instead of whatever. And any day that I have to change my routine, it really does throw the kids off. They're like, wait, we're not doing our Mentimeter today, or wait, we're not having our reading time. And I try not to do that, but there are some circumstances where I have to change what our structure looks like. And the students like get really sad that they have to miss out on one of the things that we normally do. So um, that just shows me that they love it too. No, and that's important and really finding that balance. I mean, Alex is saying here, predictability and consistency are so important in helping students feel comfortable in the classroom. But I really appreciate the emphasis on the fact that 
it's not the same thing every day. It's just the same expectations every day. It can look different. Can you talk about Mentimeter a bit? I've used that a little bit and I've heard really good things, but if I'm a teacher and I want to look into it, can you tell me a little bit about how I might use it? Yeah. So I just use the free version. Um, the free version is pretty basic, but it gets the job done. So what I'll do is before class, I just set up a question. There's a ton of different formats you can pick from. You can do a trivia question, which is kind of like a mini Kahoot question where you start the question and then the students have like 10 seconds to answer it. And then it like ranks them if they get it correct and who got it correct the fastest. Um, there are open-ended questions that the students can type responses and it projects onto the board. There are um, like multiple choice. You can do like ranking on like a sliding scale. There's a bunch of different options. And I just like to just have a random question to start the day. Sometimes I will relate it to what's going on. So if there's like a current event and I wanted to like get their feelings on it, or if they are coming back from winter break, I may ask how their break was. Some days it is just totally random, but it is something that the kids just love coming into class and like seeing what type of question it is that day. And then if it's like a trivia question, they just love that mini competition to start the day. Um, whatever it is that we're doing, I've just found that to be so important. And I think some people maybe would like die on the hill of like, you need to have a bell ringer that is like content related. They need to come in and do like a grammar question. Um, but I've just found with my students that those five to eight minutes starting with that random question of the day, then when I turn around and ask them to do something after that, as we get started, they are ready to go because they've had that chance to like get their energy out and their silliness and get, like share their voice, whatever it is that they want to say. And then now it's time to get moving and they are, they respond very well to that. Oh, I think that's so cool. We have a lot of people in our comments kind of going through how they use routine as well. Uh, Laura's jumping in and say she's a very similar setup, warm up, main activity or instruction, and then independent work. So it's the same, but like different daily, which I, I, I really appreciate you emphasizing, Carrie. That's so, so important. You know, how do you, can I ask a silly question? Like, how do you think of bell ringer questions? I think some educators are nervous to take on some routine and consistency that has to do with that kind of like engagement right off the bat, because they're worried that at some point they're not going to be able to be consistent with it. Have you ever had that fear? Um, I do just do a lot of searching online. So I'll search for like, would you rather questions? I will search for random trivia questions. I try to align them with like things that are currently going on. So around Halloween, we just did a bunch of Halloween trivia questions and like, what's your favorite Halloween candy? So I just using like the current calendar is kind of my go-to. Um, I also have a form on our Canvas homepage where students can submit questions and they can fill out like a trivia question or a would you or would you rather? And I think that is kind of fun because students can submit their own and see their voice shared at the beginning of class too. So, wow. and yeah. I really like that because by using the calendar, you're now giving yourself as the teacher, as the creator, a little bit of a direction versus it just being open-ended every single day. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll just see random things on social media. You know, like a long time ago, there was like that, is this dress black and blue or like red or like pink and gold or whatever it was like yeah. there's all the time like the laurel and yanny thing and all these different like things that are happening on social media and people are like debating like which one is correct and so anytime i see anything like that on like instagram i'll just save it and add that to my list of our mentimeter so i just find everything online well and honestly like having that running list whether you use that dress example, what do you, whether you use that on social media that day or use it, you know, two weeks from then kind of keeping that running list of, oh, this could be a good idea to use for a bell ringer. I'm going to throw it in a Google doc, you know, and then that's something you can utilize. That's, that's really good. Yeah. Nikki is saying that she made the conscious decision uh, in the last years that her warm up is almost never content related, all about relationship building, which is very much what you're sharing, Carrie. That makes mm -hmm. a ton of sense. I like that. Yeah. And I don't think there's anything wrong with doing content related. I think it depends on how you're structuring your class because you may have other opportunities for more relationship building later in the class. I've just found that the way that I structure class, is just a good way to start it because we're like intentionally just 
talking together before we start our day. And I think students sometimes just need a chance to say something before you ask them to get focused on the work for the day. Yeah, what I like about Mentimeter especially is I'm thinking through how I could use it with like my middle school students. One of the things I really enjoyed is having a picture of what their desk should look like to be set up and ready for the day. Sorry, my dogs are wrestling in the background. <laughs> I don't know what much to do about that. <laughs> Come on. Um, anyway, yep, so there we go. Oh. <laughs> That's because they know I'm on the screen and I love dogs. So they had to make an appearance. Seriously, like Carrie the dog whisperer, and now we have very, very excited <laughs> mutts over here. Um, anyway, what I was saying is I used to have like a picture of what their desk should look like really to show them like what tools and resources they should have out or like easily accessible so that they could like easily transition. And with Mentimeter, you're, you're essentially having them engage right off the bat with, a, with, with their laptop or with some sort of technology that you then could easily transition into. And now we're going to use this specific technology for our next thing. So I think that that also allows the teacher to not only engage with the students, but you can do a little bit of prep work to make that transition into content really seamless in terms of resources as well. Yeah, I love that idea too. And I think another thing when I was thinking about this beforehand that I wanted to bring up is that I feel like classroom management is always going to be a work in progress. Um, I feel like every, and I know Katie mentioned this yesterday too, that like every class is different, every year is different. How I handle my second and third hour ELA class is so different than what I do with my eighth and ninth hour in terms of classroom management. And not every day is perfect. There are some days that I'm like, oh my gosh, they're not listening to me. What? Where have I gone wrong? Um, and there are some days where I'm like, they are working, they are doing what's expected. Like I've got this. And then yeah, other days I'm like, what is happening? So I think it's just good to just be real with that. And realize that even as you get further in your career and you get more of these classroom management skills in your tool belt, there's still going to be days that they're just not doing what you've expected of them. But then I think as long as you reflect on what you could do to continue to share the expectations with them beforehand, then I think that'll just make it easier every day going forward. I think, and, and that's the best reminders that we can give all week. I mean, our whole week has been focused on are, are is hoping to be focused on classroom management 101. Like what are the basics? And I think these core fundamentals allow us to stay within a very structured space while still allowing us the freedom to have fun and engage with students because we teach tiny humans and we want them to be yeah. successful and engaged in their learning. So it's so important. Yeah, for sure. Um, we have a guest blogger who actually reached out to me in the last week, and she is going to be working on a post about reestablishing um, routines with students after winter break and really involving them in the process and how that works better after winter break than it does at the beginning of the year, because they've had some time to go through the routines and expectations in your class and then kind of resetting with them after winter break and having them be involved in like getting those clear expectations about what's expected at each part of the class. So she's working on that. I'm super excited for it. So stay tuned in the next couple of weeks. And I'm excited to read her post because I was like, that sounds awesome. I want to do that with my students after winter break. So I'm excited for that one too. No, I think that's so awesome. And as many of you know, we do publish blogs every single week related to the topic of daily drop-in to just continue to foster the discussion. So I think anything related to classroom management, things that can be tips and tricks are always so helpful, especially when our guest bloggers are able to lend their perspective mm -hmm. on it. And, you know, our guest bloggers are all around the world. So you're not just getting, you know, a very like small little bubble of an idea that's of something that worked, but you're really looking at a global perspective on a lot of these ideas, which is kind of cool. Yeah. And I think with classroom management, it's not like a black and white thing like this works and this doesn't. I think each person has to take all of the different tips and tricks and kind of pick and choose what works for them, because one little thing that really works for one class may not work for another. So I think just being very purposeful in what you're picking. Yeah. So yesterday we challenged our, our network um, when Katie was live on the Daily Drop-In to look at kind of like the phases of how their classroom goes. Like we were still talking about routines, mm -hmm. but we were talking about like the phases, the, how, the, how they walk in, that beginning phase, maybe they transition. We've been talking about that today here with transitioning into a mini lesson and then maybe independent work time. And we challenged our network to really think about 
some of those intentional moments in those phases. I think today, Carrie, we can challenge everybody to really just think of that first five minutes, the beginning, beginning, beginning phase of mm -hmm. class. What are you choosing to do and how can that routine be a part of getting yourself prepped for not only the right like mentality for the day, mm -hmm. but the right resources for the day and kind of everything in between. Can that look different even day to day? Can it look different Monday versus Tuesday, but still have some sort of that routine, which I think is a good reflection. It's kind of a bite-sized piece of looking at your structure. Mm -hmm, for sure. So good. We are going to head into some holidays and some good news stories, Carrie. So are we ready to celebrate a little bit more of our day before we head out? Yes. All right, here we go. All right, Carrie, we were talking about this before we went live. There are so many holidays today. I think sometimes we log on to nationaltoday.com, which is where we get a lot of our holidays. And it's just like, oh, one or two ideas. There are like 1,200 holidays today. I don't know how we're <laughs> going to fit all them in. So um, I wanted to at least mention a few. One is that it's National Short Girl Appreciation Day. I don't know what height you have to be to be considered a short girl but I can tell you that I'm short. Carrie, do you consider yourself short? I would not consider myself short. I would say I'm like maybe average. I'm like five, seven. I feel like that's maybe pretty average for a girl, maybe a little bit taller, but yeah. yeah I wouldn't no, consider I, myself short. I've yeah. heard though, like five, seven is kind of like an average. I'm five, three on a really good day. I'm more like five, <laughs> two. So five, seven to me, I'm like, you're really tall. You're not short, but I have no idea what those rules are. So I'd love to hear in the comments, if um, you're a female listening in the teach better community, we'd love to hear how tall you are. I think then we can classify That's how true. many of us are considered tall or short for sure for a national short girl day. It's also winter solstice, which is always wonderful to celebrate. Um, it is a, uh, Look on the bright side day, which is kind of fun. See, Laura commented, she's only 5'3". So, Laura, we're short together. I hate to tell you. We're short <laughs> together. Look on the bright side day. I like that day. That's a that's a cool holiday. I wouldn't have expected that in December, but I like it. See, I can combine the last two that you just mentioned with the win winter solstice. It is the short, or it's the shortest day of the year today, which means really? that we have the least amount of daylight. But every day from here on out, we're getting more daylight. Mm -hmm. So there is the winter solstice and looking at the bright side. <laughs> oh my gosh, Carrie, you need to be on the show every single day. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Nikki's also jumping in and saying she's 5'10". Oh, yes, yeah. Nikki, you win. You're the tallest one so far. Yeah. I like this. I like this. Um, Carrie, do you like crossword puzzles? You know, I do. And I also hate them. It's funny. I, ha I actually have an app on my phone for crossword puzzles that sometimes I get bored and just do them. But then I also get frustrated when I can't get the answer. And then I just click on like the button that says, tell me the answer. So I have a love hate relationship with them, but you know, who loves them is Caitlin Giordano. She yeah. Is she, crossword she queen. Loves crosswords. And I will say, I think I like um, your mentality of cheating at crosswords. I, I'm a fan <laughs> of that. Well, today is National Crossword Puzzle Day, so happy uh, Crossword Puzzle Day to all of you. It's also National Flashlight Day, National French Fried Shrimp Day, always good. National Main Day, it just goes on and on and on and on. So for those of you looking to celebrate a holiday, I promise you, you will find something to celebrate today. We encourage all of you to bring these holidays to maybe your family, or if you're in school today, bring them to your students, your colleagues just fun attention getters, fun, you know, relationship builders, kind of everything in between, which is always good. Love this. I love that. I cannot get behind the shrimp one. I am not a seafood eater. Okay. So just all seafood or shrimp specifically? Most seafood. Like, I don't know. I will eat like a fried haddock or a boiled haddock or salmon. Um, and that's probably about it. Like I'm very picky with seafood. It like can't be in the shape of what it is. So that I think is where I draw the line. I feel that way about all food. I don't want any of that's my true. food in the shape of what it is. That's true. So I think that's why I can't do like, I don't know, like lobster. I can't do shrimp. Yeah, I just, no. 
I'm good. <laughs> okay. So no seafood eating with Carrie, unless you cut it up into tiny pieces and she just doesn't know what, what it looks right. like. Yeah. I'm not that picky with like the genre of food, if, if that's what you call it. But the seafood is one thing that I'm like, don't take me to a seafood place. <laughs> yeah. It's not everyone's cup of tea. I get it. I will yeah. say I do try and eat a lot of seafood. I feel like I tr I've tried over the last few months to incorporate more fish into my diet, but mm -hmm. I don't think I'm being successful and the fish I'm eating does not look like what it looks like. So, I mean, I understand <laughs> that approach, like not wanting your food to look like the animal that, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I would say <laughs> my sister is a vet and she is constantly studying the connection between animals and obviously our food supply and everything else. And she is the opposite. She like wants to know exactly where her food came from and all these pieces. And I'm like, it's just too far for me. Yeah. It's not my thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Alex, of course, I knew this was happening. Alex is jumping in. What about fruit and vets? What about oh, fruits that's and funny. those almost always look like what they are. Okay. Yeah. He wins. He wins. <laughs> I do want an apple to look like an apple. I don't really like fruit either. I love vegetables. I'll eat almost any vegetable. I love vegetables. I don't really like fruit. Why? What's wrong with like, you? What I could you? eat like apples and grapes. I could do that. Sometimes pineapple. The rest of the fruit world, no. Have you ever have you ever had a mango? Um, yes. I'm not, yeah, I don't it's it's, it's don't the know. best, it's the best food of all time. So I don't understand. You must have had a bad mango. There's no maybe way. I should try. I'll try a mango sometime and I'll let you know again. Like it's a fresh mango. Favorite. Like, don't go buy. You got to get like one that like isn't cut up. Like, okay, Carrie, we're going to do a fruit tasting at some point. Okay. Okay. The tea I can try to food. like find a love of fruit in my, you know, third decade of life. We can yeah, exactly. Like a, a teach better team fruit tasting. We can do a teach better team vegetable tasting. I think all these things <laughs> are good. We can all be exposed to different items. We talk about doing a cooking show. I think this could kind of be it. I'm in for that. I don't mm -hmm. love cooking, but if it was a show and I, someone got to teach me what to do, I'm in. I'm all for it as well. You guys just don't want me cooking. I don't know who on the Teach Better <laughs> team should be cooking. It just, it isn't me. Uh, thankfully, we have like 22 other members of our team mm -hmm. and a whole community that can help us. But yeah, if we're doing a cooking show, Ray is not going to be the host, unless it was one of those cooking shows that like, I'm embarrassing myself the whole time and somebody's teaching me how to do it, that then yeah. I could maybe be successful. I could do a good crock pot meal. I mean, do those count as cooking like a little bit? I mean, not a lot of prep work. I, you know. I think so. I mean, it totally counts. Yeah. Oh, see, Alex, Alex is bringing up frozen pizza. Yep. Yeah. Alex is frozen pizza. That I can do. You frozen pizza? You're good at that, Gary? Yeah, that I can do. And I don't put the cardboard underneath it. So <laughs> did you learn that on the uh, Teach Better Live? Because I feel like that was a lesson that many yeah. of us learned that day. Uh-huh. Yep. <laughs> so fun. Carrie, we also have a good news story. I thought this was such a fun article. Like you guys know, we do good news articles every single day, not only for you, not only for your families, but also as a you know, a resource that you could go and bring to your students or bring to your colleague to foster good discussion and relationships. This was just such a fun, sweet story that we'd love to amplify and share. The headline says, teen builds bus stop shelter for five-year-old wheelchair user protecting him from harsh winds. So teenagers have built a shelter for a five-year-old boy who uses a wheelchair after noticing he got wet while waiting for the school bus over the winter. Five-year-old rider has been um, battling the rain and wind and snow um, every day for about 15 minutes under an umbrella as he waits for his bus. But after hearing about this problem, there was a number of different local students that came together in Rhode Island to get a shelter built for this young boy. And so they built it right outside his bus stop. So it's just within the neighborhood. Ryder said um, that he uses it every day before school and um, that everybody is just so thrilled to see this wonderful opportunity. The community came together to offer this. Uh, he does like to hang out in front from time to time. He calls it his fort and will continue to use it day to day as he is getting ready for school. Um, it goes through kind of this process of building the shelter, kind of how the timeline worked. But essentially what it concluded with is that they had this umbrella that they were trying to use as a safe haven for him as he was waiting for his bus. And now he has this incredibly large shelter 
that about 12 um, teenagers came together to build for him. So shout out to that really, really sweet story. I think there's a lot of things we can do to discuss so many different elements of that story, not only with our students, with our family. So just kind of a feel good moment. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that. Yeah, so fun. You know, Carrie, we are going to um, conclude and wrap up our daily drop-in as we wish everybody an incredible Tuesday, but I wanted to make sure that we had an opportunity for you to share how people can stay connected to you, not only educator to educator, but also if they want to get into blogging, if they wanted to learn more about the courses that are available, whether they're blogging with us or not. So how can people get ahead, can get in contact with you? So you can reach out to me on either Twitter or Instagram at Miss Pitstick, or um, you can email me, carrie at teachbetter.com. And any of those methods are great to get in contact with me and we can chat about really anything. So, um, yep, I will be there. So fun. Carrie, thanks for coming on the show. I know we have daily drop in and we want to remind all of you daily drop in does not stop over winter break. We're here Monday through Friday regardless of what your schedule looks like. And we want to be here to not only celebrate random Tuesdays with you, but also celebrate the holidays and the new year with you. So make sure that you tune in every single morning, especially next week with our Build the Grid series. So it's going to be such a ball. Carrie, thanks again for joining us. This is so fun. Always good to talk shop with you. Yeah, thank you. I had so much fun. Oh, so good. For everyone else, we hope you enjoy your last few sips of coffee bright and early on this Tuesday morning. And please let us know if you need anything because we're here. Uh, to be alongside you as you head into a brand new new year. So, all right, bye friends. See you later.